All right, so Coach Byrne joins us now. And first of all, congratulations. And I'm just going to start with it being kind of simple and short. Why Harvard? Why now? Yeah, if you're going to be simple and short, I'll be simple and short. It's Harvard. And there's no place like it on the planet. And their commitment and passion for athletics and excellence, I think, is the standard with which every university on the planet aspires to reach. And so, you know, their disappointment on, on you know, where the program had gotten to and, and their excitement for kind of re-energizing and, and redirecting, all those things came together at the right time for me right now. Yeah, you mentioned at the right time. I was wondering about the timing of everything because over the years, I'm sure you've had interest in different places as well. You know, you know what? Were, why was this the point where you wanted to make the leap? You know, I think you know, I've been fortunate to, be, to have been in some of those conversations in the past and, you know, for a variety of reasons, mostly for my kind of fidelity to Notre Dame, my love for my family, my respect for my, my wife's profession and her commitment to the excellence that she provides and what she does, all those things kind of conspired against it not happening for me for a variety of reasons. And, and I love Notre Dame. And, you know, my children went here. My wife went here. I went to graduate school here. So my connection and roots were here were deep. So all of those things kind of work um, together to make it easy to to stay. Uh, why this time? You know, I think the attraction of Harvard, the, the dedication of their staff and their athletic director, the friends of Harvard lacrosse community demonstrated, you know, w without hesitation, their belief that that Harvard can compete and should compete for Ivy League championships every year and should compete on the national stage. So the combination of you know my my uh, state and life, my wife's support, the excitement of and and respect for what Harvard stands for globally and everything that they do, it, it made it a, a great opportunity and a great choice for me right now. Yeah, it sounds like it, it was one for you in, in your life. You said it, how great it is to, to move on to Harvard, but how tough was it really to leave Notre Dame? Well, you know, as I shared with my players and, and our alumni and, and, you know, Coach Corrigan and the, you know, the staff of people that su support our program here was, you know, there, there was, I can't think of a decision that can even approach uh, this. Um, and and that, that was hard, but, you know, change, new opportunities, new experiences, new adventure, the, the chance to engage with a new group of athletes and students at, at Harvard who are, who've expressed unbelievable support passion and excitement for what the future could be for for the seniors on a team that's their last year for the incoming group they have will have four years together you know the the two spectrums of of that group combined with the friends of harvard lacrosse and and the athletic community and the academic community at harvard there was there was not a moment of hesitation of their desire to have a strong program and create really good people and prepare um, student athletes for their life after Harvard. So it was extremely difficult to leave and I'm in the middle of that moment where I'm saying goodbye to the group that's that, that I coached here and and saying hello to the new group in Boston. It's, you know, that juxtaposition is, is quite unique because you have the full range of, of emotions. But, you know, every second uh, of my day is focused on transitioning to Harvard, meeting the new players, getting to know them and their parents, understanding their life as student athletes at Harvard, what their summer is like, how their training has been going, because they've been they've been having to be accountable to each other, which is what great teams do anyway. But they particularly had to do it because, you know, the coaching search was was thorough and professional and and they were diligent about it and they were detail oriented. And I'm excited that that they chose me and I'm, I'm coming into this situation with an unbelievable amount of energy 
and competitiveness and, and desire to reward their faith in me um, so I can bring Harvard what it hopes for. You mentioned what you're bringing there, and, and you're known as a creative coach when it comes to your recruiting, the videos uh, that you put up uh, throughout the years here. Um, what aspects do you think are going to help that program in terms of your own personal style? You know, I, I think for, for anybody, you have to be yourself, and, and because I think this generation, more than anything, respects authenticity, and and I and I I have no apologies for who I am and how I carry myself. I think my values, uh, you live your values. You don't you don't speak them. They're they're demonstrated in the relationships that you build with your players, and your staff, and the people that support the program, and and all the different circles and iterations as you go away from your players to your staff to the athletic department to the academic part of campus. So I think what I'll bring is a desire to reward the, the, the faith and, and belief that the, the people who were communicating to me about the opportunity at Harvard, their, their faith in me, I, I hope to reward in every second of everything that I do at, at Harvard. Uh, concurrently, you know, the players who are there, the players who are, in, are coming into Harvard this year, the commits that are coming in the future, I want to help them aspire and actualize everything about themselves as people, as students, as athletes, as teammates, as, as young men, as brothers, as sons, as siblings, as members of the Harvard academic community and athletic community. That's, that's a significant that's a big lofty goal. And while at the same time as that is going on, communicating to our players at Harvard a sense of gratitude and humility around an appreciation for being at such a prestigious place that they shouldn't forget all the people that helped them get there. Besides their hard work and their intellect, they had coaches, they had fathers, they had mothers, they had um, you know, assistant coaches and coaches from other sports and some teachers who inspired them in the sciences or in the humanities. All those people have played a part in helping them get to Harvard, and they shouldn't forget them, just like they shouldn't forget how blessed they are to be at, at such a great place. And so I think if, you know, the, the, the X's and O's part, it, frankly, I, I've always felt like it's, people make that more, much more complex than it is. I think if, if guys have that appreciation and that sense of place and time of where they are, combined with you know a vision for how you want to play, you know the how you're going to be evaluated as a player, how you're going to be evaluated as a person, what are the what are the values of your program and, and what you look for in your players, if you can put all those things together, which is a lot of things I know, and that takes time, but if you can put them together, you're gonna you're gonna be able to step out of every locker room, and have a chance to win that game. What steps do you take personally almost to sort of step walk in their shoes and sort of understand these athletes that you're going to be coaching now in a different environment than you've been experiencing at Notre Dame now doing that at Harvard? You know, I, th I think it starts with, you know, talking to you, your future players. I've been texting and sending group messages out to the group at Harvard that is, you know, you got some people who are in Boston, you have significant amount, amount that are studying abroad, you got others who are in Chicago, New York, and San Francisco, and all over the country. And obviously technology allows you to build closer relationships before you actually get face to face in front of somebody. So part of that is the conversation that I had during the, the interviewing process, which was around, you know, trying to understand what the house system is at, at Harvard, you know, the athletic Part of campus is on one side of, of the river and the academic residential life is on the other side of the river and obviously the rules of, of the ivy league are, are different than you know, than everybody else that plays division one lacrosse so part of it is conversational part of it you, it was learned by in the interviewing uh process and the other part of it is you know i'm going to be living in cambridge and waiting for my for my wife to come. She's going to come visit me uh, two times a month. Uh, so I'm going to be immersed in the social and academic and intellectual life of, of Harvard. I'm not going to be, you know, watching what our guys do. I don't believe in that. I think good people with strong values don't need to be uh, have their shoulders overlooked by their their coaches. But I want to understand what that community of Harvard is like. I want to know what the 
what the house system is like. I want to know what the the rigors of the academic life and the and the timing and the demands of of exams and and group projects and things like that. So part of it is I have to do the work to understand that. And then part of it is also conversational. Let's transition to a little bit more on the field. I know you said the X's and O's sort of, all, all everything sort of plays a part together, but at Notre Dame, you're, def you're known for the defenses. I mean, both team-wise and the individuals that you developed over time there. How do you do that at a new pro program starting from scratch here? You know, I've already started you know, watching some film uh, of them. We actually played Harvard. Um, Notre Dame played Harvard um, last October, so I have a film where I, I could watch them play when they were in the, you know, I'd only practiced probably six or seven times at that point. The, you know, part of being a coach is that you, you have, you know, do you start with, hey, this is the mentality of how we're going to play, regardless of the talent that you have? Or do you assess your talent and say, here, these are the things that we're going to do? Uh, you know, I think there's some fundamental and, um, and there's definitely some fundamental things that we want, we're going to want to try to uh, institute defensively there that, uh, that we can bring from here. But I think your talent dictates how you play. And so I don't want to presume that I know enough about how they played you know, their, their game strategies and the tactics that they undertook within their league and outside of their league. Uh, but I definitely have strong feelings about how you guard people, how you play picks, how you communicate how you develop a culture uh, um, of small groups and groups of six and groups of two and groups of three that develop the culture uh, defensively. And, and, and I have the same feelings offensively. Um, so I'm going to be looking for staff that can teach that everybody wants to play, but before you can play, you need to understand how to play two man. You need to know how to play crease defense. You need to know how to play off ball offense. You need to know how to cut. You need to know how to shoot standing still and on the run. So some of those things are immutable. They're, they're true for Harvard, it's just as they're true for any other team that plays lacrosse. So part of it is watching film and getting an understanding of the talent that is coming back and the strengths that they had this year, as well as some of the shortcomings and figuring out, hey, are, what are, are some of the problems athletic or some of the problems strategic or some of them, you know, a, a talent gap or an athletic gap? And was it a face off? Was it, you know, I don't know those things. Hmm. And so I don't want to presume that I'm going to come in with some cookie cutter style that just because it worked here means it's going to work there. But there's definitely some fundamentals and, and commandments that, that we'll bring from an offensive and, and defensive side here at Notre Dame that I think are applicable to uh, any school, including Harvard. Yeah, you mentioned what you don't know about some of the new guys you're going to be working with and, 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 that, and that culture. Um, but we do know, and while we got you here, I got to ask, you know, you look at the professionals that you've churned out and the Redwoods of the PLL, I mean, that's a Notre Dame defense, right? I mean, what's it like for you to see guys that you worked with so closely at a level like that and, and hopefully to do more of that in the future at Harvard too? Listen, there, there's, there's nothing that fills a coach up more than watching their guys shine, you know, and that and that shining can be, you know, watching them build a family, watching them you know, have professional success, you know, for for a lot of our guys that are continuing to play, you know, in the new league, not only in the PLL but in the MLL. No, you watch them, and it's like watching your your children shine. It's the same, you know. Again, particularly if you do it in a way where you know, you know, teaching your guys how to play the sport, but also teaching them to be, you know, young men of character. You know, listen, you know, the, the window of playing lacrosse, you know, is will close pretty quickly. But, you know, the kind of person you are, the kind of father you are, the kind of husband you are, you know, that goes on for another 40, 50 years. I always tell, you know, as parents that, you know, you're going to be a former Division One athlete for, for 20 times longer than you were you know, Division One athlete. And so, but watching those guys, I had a chance to see them play and, and watching them use the language that they used here, not bad language, but the defensive language right. that they used here and, and having, you know, four or five or sometimes six Notre Dame guys down at the defensive end was tremendous. I'm, I'm so happy for those guys. They're so deserving. And, you know, I, 
uh, it's important to me. It's always been important to me to have that kind of relationship with the guys that I coach because I, I want to, I want to know them when they're 50, you know, if I can last that long, I want to, I, you know, and I'm going to know them longer than I knew them. I'm going to know them as former athletes and not longer than I'm going to know them as actual athletes. And so, yeah, I watched that with a tremendous amount of pride. I watched that with, you know, watching them actualize their, their gifts and, and, and knowing that I played a small role in that. And, but what I do know is I want to have those same relationships with my guys at, at Harvard and I want them to see me as a person, not just that I can teach them how to play lacrosse, but hopefully live a life that of, of, of integrity and, and values that, that they can come to, to expect and lean on. And that, so that when I'm delivering a message around how we play team defense, they know that the first part of that is team and that, you know, defenses give up goals, not goalies or one-on-one -on -one defensemen. Coach. Uh, that's really what it's all about for sure. Thank you so much for the time. Congratulations once again. Before you go, do you have a new Twitter handle? I'm wondering. I, 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 have, I have not. Um, you know, there seems to be some curiosity uh, <laughs> around that. Um, I've kind of gotten dark for a couple of days relative to that. Um, I, you know, my wife, has, my wife uh, Dr. Byrne, has very strong feelings. Uh, and, you know, I didn't ask her, but she... He has very strong feelings, but I, I don't know. Something's coming. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be, though. All right. We'll, we'll be keeping an eye on it for sure. Thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. Uh, safe travels. Thank you. Go Harvard.